As I grow as a cinematographer, I found that my taste in lenses is ever changing or even evolving. With that evolution has come a desire to find lenses whose unique look suits my projects. That search sometimes leads me to anamorphic lenses with a distinct set of visual characteristics. Anamorphic lenses bring what some DPs refer to as a textured, unnatural, and even filmic look to their work. Today, we're going to talk about the Vazen anamorphic lenses. The Vazen anamorphic lenses are an affordable alternative to more well-known anamorphic lenses used in bigger productions. Available either as a set or individually, including a 65, 40, and 28 mm the Vazens come in either Canon RF or Micro Four Thirds mounts. Although these lenses have been around for a while now, I finally got a chance to try out the 28 and 40 mm lenses thanks to Vazen reaching out to me for a review here on the channel. The big question is, did the Vazens live up to my expectations, or did they fall short? To answer that question, I took on a few diverse projects where I shot with the Vazens, including a fashion video, a documentary for a street photographer, and a short film that I co-created with my talented friend Matt who wrote and directed the film, which you can just so happen to watch on his new YouTube channel. So with that said, let's take some time to talk about what it's like to actually use the Vazen anamorphic lenses. Now I'm trying to move these videos away from just a regurgitation of specs, so I think that it's important for me to address the difference between these two lenses, because if you're buying a set of lenses, or even just a pair of lenses, I feel that it's important that these lenses work well together. While the 28 and 40 millimeter Vazen lenses match up pretty well in terms of the look they produce, unfortunately, from a usage standpoint, the Vazen anamorphic lenses stop playing nice with each other. When it comes to size and weight, the 40 mm is big and heavy, while the 28 mm is the polar opposite. The 40 mm is almost seven inches long and weighs just about four pounds. The outer front diameter is 95 mm, but it has no filter thread. In comparison, the 28 mm is much smaller at a little over four inches and weighing just over a pound and a half. It has an 80 millimeter front diameter and also a 77 millimeter filter thread. Now, since the 40 millimeter doesn't have a filter thread, I needed to use a matte box to work with filters, which means that switching to the 28 millimeter called for a complete adjustment of the matte box system. The huge difference in size also means that the lenses don't share the same focus and iris gearing positions, which simply adds to the time spent when switching lenses if you're using a follow focus system. So over the past few years, when buying or even renting camera gear, I've found that it's important for it to fit within my workflow. So if you use a matte box in your workflow, or you're often integrating a follow focus into your camera rig, you will want to know that with the Vazen anamorphic lenses, you'll definitely have to budget some extra time for lens swaps into your production. When it comes to pulling focus and iris, the 40 millimeter Vazen has a 300 degree rotation and the iris ring has a 90 degree rotation. On the other hand, the 28 millimeters focus throw is 120 degrees. I personally feel that this makes for a disjointed user experience when using the lenses together as a set. When shooting with these lenses independently, I didn't find this to be so much of a problem. The 28 millimeter is especially pleasant to use when filming solo, with the 40 millimeter being a bit on the cumbersome side for handheld use. Both the 28 and 40 millimeter Vazen anamorphic lenses have a 1.8 squeeze factor and are meant to cover a Super 35 sensor. And since the Red Komodo does its de-squeezing in camera thanks to a variety of built-in anamorphic modes, I didn't have to do any work in post to de-squeeze. 
This, in my opinion, makes the Vazens a great pairing with the Red Komodo. Now, in terms of sensor coverage, Vazen states on their website that in the RF mount version, the 40mm lens covers the full height of the Red Komodo and Canon C70 sensors, giving you a vignette-free image. However, even in the 4x3 anamorphic mode on the Komodo, I still experience vignetting, especially at higher T-stops. As I opened up the iris, the vignette began to disappear around T4. So, even though Vazen advertises that the 40mm is vignette-free, I unfortunately found that wasn't the case. The 28mm does vignette in 6K 4x3 anamorphic mode on the Komodo quite heavily, which might be a huge negative for some. Personally, the vignetting is something that I can deal with by simply cropping in on the image in post, but that's not always optimal. Cropping a little bit on the shot isn't the end of the world for me, especially since I'm shooting in the 6K anamorphic mode on the red Komodo. Now on the other hand, if you are shooting in 4K on a camera like the Canon C70, this might be a deal breaker for you. As with most anamorphic lenses, the Vazens pose a bit of a challenge when it comes to shooting close to the subject. The minimum focus distance of both the 28mm and the 40mm is 2.7 feet from the front element of the lens, meaning that you aren't going to get right up on your subject without the use of a diopter. Now on these shots, I did use a plus one diopter from Lindsay Optics to get as close to the subject as possible. Now with all that out of the way, the beauty of these lenses, or any anamorphic lens for that matter, is the imperfect or almost unnatural look it brings to the footage. From the flaring, distortion, breathing, and distinct oval orbs in the bokeh, the Vazen anamorphic lenses bring those characteristics without being overly aggressive, yet still more pronounced than their cheaper competition. When choosing an anamorphic lens for my project, there's a good chance I'm doing so to get the distinct horizontal flaring that anamorphic lenses often produce. With that said, I don't always want an over-the-top flare that many anamorphic lenses are known for. With the Vazen anamorphic lenses, depending on the light source and the angle that the light hits the lens, you will definitely see the distinct blue flaring, and it stands out in the frame. I personally don't tend to favor an aggressive flaring, so I found that the flaring on the Vazens to be generally pleasing and fairly easy to control and overall not too distracting. As my taste in cinematography evolves and changes, I find myself desiring an out of focus area with interesting character. The bokeh that the Vazen anamorphic lenses produce brings that unique oval pattern to the image with some slight cutting towards the outer edges of the frame. I personally like the imperfection of the cutting. Now the other characteristics of the out of focus areas can be described as slightly smeared, a bit organic, and even swirly with the right amount of detail in the subject. Ultimately, I feel that this turns out to be my favorite characteristic of the Vazens. Another distinct anamorphic characteristic is the unique distortion at the widest edges of the shots. The Vazen anamorphic lenses have barrel distortion that bows out vertical lines towards the outer edges of the frame. And as I expected, due to it being a wider focal length, the distortion is a lot more evident on the 28mm. This type of distortion can come across as distracting and can even be looked down upon from fans of spherical lenses, but I feel that this often comes down to being a stylistic choice. The focus breathing is fairly significant on the Vazens, and from what I gather in my brief experience with anamorphic lenses as a whole, this is a common trait and it's nothing to freak out over. This comes down to, yet again, another stylistic choice. In regards to sharpness, on a 6K sensor like the Red Komodo has, these lenses are very soft when shooting wide open, especially in the corners of the frame. I found that when shooting at higher T-stops, the image does sharpen up significantly, but more often than not, if I'm shooting on an anamorphic lens, I'm doing so to take advantage of the look when shooting with the lens opened up. Again, this comes down to a personal preference and a stylistic choice, but I did feel that the Vazens were a bit too much on the soft side for my liking. Having shot on just a few different anamorphic lenses, including the C-Ray line and Atlas Orions, I'm finding that the more I shoot on anamorphic lenses, the more I love the aesthetics that they bring to my shots. I absolutely love the widescreen format that anamorphic lenses provide, especially at a time when more and more content is being produced for vertical screens, whether we like it or not. With the organic characteristics of the bokeh, breathing and flaring, 
I simply can't ignore lenses like the Vazen Anamorphics when considering which lenses to choose for my projects. So despite their downfalls when it comes to the 40 millimeters cumbersome size and the set's overall mismatched pairing, visually, the Vazen Anamorphic lenses has provided some of my work a bit more of a distinct look and feel. At a time where camera gear is so accessible and more and more creators are cranking out content at such a rapid pace, a bit of character is an absolute welcome addition to any filmmaker's arsenal of lenses. <laughs>